Today we'll be talking about GPT for autocoder and self-improver, which executes the code automatically and gets error messages if there is any, and then sends it back as a, to the GPT so that we can actually give it more information so it can improve our code even better this time. Let's start with a quick demonstration, but before we do that, I just want to mention and make an announcement that I'm starting AI workshop and live QA sessions for my Patreon supporters. The first one is going to be on April 5th at 12 p.m. noon. The link will be in the description. Let's run this code real quick. When we run it, we're greeted with the welcome to GPT-4 autocoder message, and then it asks us, do you want to improve an existing file, type yes, or continue with an idea? Let's start with file. We say yes. What it does is it actually goes and looks at all the files that exist in files underscore to improve. You have to have this folder if you want this feature. And you need to have files under it. The test.py file has a wrongly written print statement. And the second one has a really poorly written for loop. So we can just select, let's say, the first one. Click enter. First one was the print statement. And it asks us how many iterations of improvement we like. Let's just say two. And then it actually wants us to check the code. So we do want to we selected the test.py before executing the code, auto executing the code. We always want to check the code because you want to make sure you want to see it before you execute, right? So we're just going to say enter. And as you see, we have printed the last 100 characters of the error. It's a syntax error, invalid syntax. So it actually sent this back, sent this error back to GPT. And then GPT-4 tried to improve it with that information. So this is what it returned. There we go. Code had a syntax error. So it's tried, it tried to fix it, and it did. And then since we asked for two improvements, it created this test update one file. This is the new file. We want to take a look at it, and then we can now execute it again. And this time, as you see, there was no error, and the hello world was printed. If there is no errors, we don't send back the output. And then, but it still continues to make some improvements and it added a print, print successful message. After that, we're done with that. And now we can continue. Do you want to improve an existing file or continue with an idea? Let's say no, so we can continue with an idea. Please enter an idea for a Python project. Let's say for loops and then click enter. And it's going to create our first file. As you see, experiment one is created. Here we go. It's created a numbers list and it's going through and adding them subsequently. And how many iterations of improvements you like on this? We're just going to say two again. And it wants us to review this code we already have. We're going to click enter. So it's improving the code. It executed the code and it's now, it had executed and printed that the total of the process is 48. So no error of message was sent back. We received a new update. We quickly review it and then click continue to execute and again we get the same result but this new one had introduced try accept block for catching errors and we get our new update as you see uh, change the variable name sum to total sum and that's it this process was done so the important part of this the difference between this to my other videos that i made is that this one actually runs the code with a sub process gets the output and the error message you can send both if you like I just sent the last 100 characters of the error. Let's do a quick code review, and then we'll actually run it in debugging mode and see what's happening line by line. We are importing OpenAI. You need to have OpenAI pip installed. We are importing OS, and we are importing subprocess to be able to execute our code. And you have to have your API key. I've set it up in my user environment as OpenAI API key, but you can define it here as well. We define a function called AskGPT3. This is just a typo on my part. Don't worry. We are using GPT3.5, but you can use GPT4 as well. Our system message is simple. You're a helpful Python coding AI who will generate code and provide suggestions for Python projects. You can just read this yourself. And then we are inputting as the user role the question, which either the idea, for example, that the user will input, right? And we try to get a generated response and we try to parse it. Uh, using the last uh, triple backticks with the R fine, and we try to get everything until that, because the code is returned to us most of the time with triple back between triple backticks, and also the work code is most of the time before the backticks is preceded with a Python, so we try to get that split the text right that moment and get the second element. So this way we're just trying to isolate the code, but sometimes this doesn't happen and we get an index error. In that case, we try for up to three times. You know. We don't want to try multiple infinite many times. 
We get, uh, the next, our next function is to get the project ID. If the user hadn't entered anything, then we want it to generate the idea and the code. If the user had entered an idea, then we want to generate the Python project according to that idea, right? Then we check for if the experiments folder exists. If not, we create it right here. Then this is our save generated code function, which will save the appropriate numbering for the generated content, such as here, like ex1, ex2, or test update one to such and so. And then we have our run code file, which actually runs the code and returns the output and the error message. And then we are actually just printing the last 100 characters of those and we are returning it. And we have our main, and this is going to run continuously. That's why we're initiating a while through loop. This self-improvement is false. We start, we initiate it with a false statement. Then we ask, do you want to improve from an existing file or, or not? If the user says yes, then we set self-improvement to true. Then we scour the files to improve directory for files. Then we print the files for user to select. Then we ask the user to select the file. Then we actually get that file. We initiate a response to an empty string. Then we read that file line by line and add it to the response. Uh, then we extract the file prefix because we're going to be numbering it and, up and writing the file names appropriately. But if the user said no, then we want to get an idea for the from the user. Or if they leave it blank, then we are actually just creating an idea, right? We have looked at that function earlier. So if not self-improve, yeah, so if the user didn't want the self-improvement from a file, then we just get a question with the function. We get a response by asking GPT-3. We get a file number. And then we save the code and get a file number for future use to be able to appropriately number the files. If it is self-improvement, then we ask for how many iterations. Then we just simply run the error message. This is just a quick check to whether we're running it for the first time or consecutive times since we're selecting the first file from files to improve. We run and we get the output and the error message from what run code file returns once we run the code. Then we create our prompt to be code to be improved is and we write the code plus the error message and then we ask it to improve it. Implement new ideas, error catching and bug fixing. That's it, and so we just send it back to GPT. We get a new one, save the generated code, and then we repeat. If not self-improved, then we exactly we do the exact same thing. How many? Meaning, if you're not working with a file, then we're working with an idea. We ask how many iterations for that. We still run the code, and we send error message. We get the error, we print the error message, and we send our new question to GPT along with the code and the error message, and ask it to improve it. If there is no error message, then I believe if there is no error message, then we just send the code. We get a new response and then we save the generated code. I just want to run this process with the debugger, with the Visual Studio Code debugger, run and debug. I put a lot of breakpoints here. So we're going to be executing this code line by line so you can see what's happening. This is a fun exercise for you to debug your own code. It's really useful a lot of times. To start the debugger, click this right here, come to the run and debug and click run and debug, or you can click F5. When we press F5, we start running the code and the code goes through the entire script one by one. We can use this step over button to actually execute it line by line. And now we are executing our main because that's how we are starting our script with the execution of the main function. So we are here, we are executing the while loop, and now we go, we set self-improve to false, then we get the user input. Do you want to improve existing file or not? We're going to say yes. And after that, it's checking if the user input is yes, and you can actually come over the input and see that it is yes. So this is really useful. You can also see on the left-hand side what's happening here. We haven't set self-improve to true yet, but the user input has been assigned yes. We're going to go one more. Self-improve now has been switched to true. You can also just hover over it and it's set to true. Now we are going to get all the files. See, we create the files list with all the files that exist in that folder. Then we, we print it one by one for, with this for loop. See, you can see test out by test out test underscore two. And then we ask the user choose a file number. Let's just choose the first one. And now we're going to open that file. We're opening it and we are defining a response to an empty, empty string. 
and we are writing it line by line, line by line to our response object. And if you actually go over the response, now it actually has our print statement. You can also see in the left hand side, all our variables, our response is defined to whatever was in that code. If there was multi-line, we only had one line of code there, but if we had multi-lines of code, this will be that adequately. Then we get the file name prefix. As you see, if you go over the file name prefix, it's going to be test. And that, if we check if not self-improve, we actually did select self-improve. So we are switching to that elif statement. How many iterations of improvement? Let's just say one. And then we are doing the for loop for that amount of attempts. If, our, if this is our first attempt, we are running the file from the file to improve. And then it's now we are at the line where we are in, I should have moved it here, like that. We are right here, right at this line. It's asking us to pre review the code and enter. And we have actually ran it and printed the error message. And now we're executing, assigning the GPT question. And we run it. As you see, GPT question variable has been assigned, our code. And then we print improving the code and we, we make a call to GPT. And then we go to save generated code. We check if exper experiments folder is existing. File name, we do check the file name. Then we open and write that code into that file. Say test underscore update underscore one. And then we return that file. And if you come here, as you can see, our new file has been written. And now we check if our number of attempts have reached the conclusion. It has, because we only asked for one, then we break. And then we check if not self-improve. And since, uh, since we are at that point, we restart the while loop. Yep. And then now we can say no, and then continue, do whatever we like. I hope you enjoy this. Like I said, if you like, check out my workshop. I, this is going to be the first of many regularly occurring workshops. I'll post the link in the description. Also, the code for this file will be available for Patreon supporters as well. The link for that will be in the description as well. Please make good use of it, and I hope you'll find this useful. Take care and see you in the next video.